Okay, October 22nd, and it should be a prime time for the uh, Kome Sushin Chang. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's something like that. I know there is a new beta version that Dwarf Lab released a couple of days ago to add the uh, comets now into the Sky Atlas, but I don't have the link yet. I, I send my email. You have to submit your email and they'll send you like a, like a special link so you can do that. I can miss this opportunity and I am going to uh, manually enter the uh, coordinates using the Sky Live web page, which is great. And it's the one that has always worked for me. And this app has been the Sky Live uh, page, skylive.com. It's amazing. I, it's very, very accurate. There's all kind of information about the comet and any sky object you can imagine. <laughs> Everything is here. But anyway, so there's a lot of information. There may be uh, some confusion uh, for some people um, regarding the numbers that you have to put uh, manually. And they're going to be the right ascension and the declination. Those are the two. And of course, um, you know, you have to uh, find your setting if you are in the United States and if not, uh, then it's going to be probably different numbers, but here is the right ascension and declination. So I'm just going to go ahead and start the telescope, turn it on and start the uh, calibration process. If you like my dwarf uh, lab hat, I am going to do a giveaway on this video. All you need to do is write a comment. You need to tell me something, whatever you want, and you're in the giveaway. If you are um, photographing always from the same location, let's say your house, well, uh, the latitude is always going to be the same. So once you find the uh, perfect alignment with the right angle, and if you use a tripod with the uh, ball head like this one, all you need to do is put it in that uh, angle. In my case, it's 35 degrees. Be sure to have it tight. And all you need to do is add another attachment here. You always will always have the perfect alignment. Uh, so all you need to do is uh, point the telescope, even if you're doing different uh, locations around your house, but always move it and point um, where Polaris is. And remember, Polaris never changes, so it's always in the same position. And kind of like look like this and you see Polaris right there. There you go. You will always have the perfect alignment without any problems. Try it and let me know in the comments. And I'm using the version 3.0. And uh, the first thing I like to do, I'm going to turn the uh, ring indicator off. And even the battery indicator, because I um, have my telescope power on here. I don't take any chances with low batteries, not for something, not for a once in a lifetime event. Oh my God. And immediately, let me go into um, astro mode here, into EQ mode. And it's going to start. So I don't need to do the focusing anymore. It should be fine. So I'm going to say done already. I have all my gears prepared, telescope, tripod, compass. I don't need compass. I know where Polaris is. I can see it right here. It's in front of me. Okay, checking on my latitude. Yes, that is my latitude. You see what happened? It may be slightly, slightly off. Okay, calculation failed, please. Oh, I know why. <laughs> the lenses are in the home position. Let's just go ahead and try again. These are little things that sometimes we forget and they can give you frustrations, but I am quite thinking this because I have been doing this for a while. Ah, a polar alignment achieve and it's perfect. I told, I told you. Uh, 
um, there are different ways to do this, but if you have uh, the Sky Atlas already, then uh, we go here on the little search area and you can go here to the plus sign. And this is where we're going to write that information. Okay, so for the right ascension, this is very simple. The 17 hours, so we just go here and put 17, uh, zero, zero. It has to be exactly what you have there uh, on the web page. And um, so that is for the right ascension, 17, zero, zero, and 28 seconds. So that's it. So here is plus zero two. And we have the plus and be sure that if it says minus for your location, you have to go here into minus, okay? Or in my case, it's plus. The two degrees, 55 and 27. Now I wanna do the one click go to because I want the dwarf two to work for me. I don't wanna do this manually. So let's see what happens. Cloudless sky, yeah, we have no obstructions. This is the same place where I did the other one. And we'll see, it's not completely dark. So now it's going to do its calibration. So be sure about those little details, the minus, the plus. It's different depending on your location. If you are doing this for the first time in astrophotography, pay attention to that. Those are little things that it can make uh, the telescope to fail, it won't, it won't find it. Just one little change different won't find it. I always hear noises here, and I know the bears and the uh, aliens are watching me. Oh, <laughs> and look at that. I mean, that is the comet. Now, it's going to be way smaller, of course, than <laughs> yeah, the Dwarf 3, but that is right there. Oh, my God. Let me go here to the settings and let me change the shutter speed to 15 seconds, which is the maximum that we can get. And it will that is amazing. That's really cool. Right in the perfect framing, right in the middle. To capture comets is very, very complicated. And the good thing about the smart telescope is that you will get a stack image and you don't have to do all that editing process because it is, it is a pain in the comet. So let me just now go to settings. I want to be sure that it's on stack image 4K and enhance on. Yes, a enhance. Let's do it. We're going to see soon our first stack. <laughs> oh. And the nucleus, of course, is going to always be overexposed because it's so bright. But you know what? Um, this is exactly how I like it. I can fix that very easily. If you have watched some of my... Why are you not watching my Pix Inside tutorials? How I... So easy to fix uh, overexposed pores for galaxies, star clusters, comets, uh, spaceships, UFOs. Oh, my God. This is so easy. I'm telling you. There's... God, you don't need to. I mean, why? Why suffer when you can do this? A lifetime, a once in a lifetime event in a couple of clicks and it's done. Hey, at least you capture it. It will be bad if you don't capture anything and then you have to wait like 88 years to do it again. I don't think so. Okay, this is my third follow up. And um, I was trying to hear a little bit image that we're starting to see that uh, anti anti tail <laughs> which is the one uh, out of the comet's head and um, we kind of like it's a little bit faint but it's getting it so I'm going to definitely continue this imaging session and also the dust tail the one with the cosmic dust uh, that one, obviously, it's the longest one, and it's the one that extends all the way. We are at about 45 minutes. And we're just going to let it go. Keep going, keep going. Come on, Shu Xing Chan. This is so great. 
Oh my god, Su Xin Shen Atlas. Yes, that's the whole name. Hey, it's me, Diana, your favorite astronaut. Remember me? <laughs> okay, so uh, 293. And um, like I said, it looks a little bit different on the tablet. So we are a little bit over an hour. So that's about 73 minutes. And I'm not seeing yet the trees here uh, below. And because I changed the, the curves a little bit, now we're starting to see um, some colors on the stars and that's okay. And I may do a little bit of adjustment on uh, Photoshop or Lightroom. But I am going to finish this session very soon because I don't want to get uh, those trees there. So I don't, I don't want to crop. It, it, it's tracking very good my opinion uh the stars look good so just a few more minutes maybe 15 more minutes and it will be done and then we're going to see 